It is April Fool's Day. I was going to come in and do a prank, but I can't even because I can't top any of you people. I asked for the best prank you ever pulled. Here are a few highlights. At Becking, I was a pretty adept uh, prank caller. I would call as an automatic number and give them numbers they had to press to take a survey. And I had written out a whole tree of what my responses were based on what they pressed because I could tell from the sound what, what button they'd hit. Uh, I think that was more of a prank on me than them because it took me so long to do it. But here's some great pranks that you have pulled. Betsy May Broadway convincing my friends I had won the lottery using a fake ticket. Those fake scratchers that are all winners. That is uh, what she used to do that. It's a fun, like a harmless prank unless unless one of them was like, I just sold everything that I own and I quit my job because you're going to take care of me. Then that would be how that backfires. Flower Space 313 called their boss at work in a panic saying that the office toilet was overflowing and water was going everywhere. Uh, that is a nightmare. Especially if you could somehow pin it on someone, that's like the worst prank is to tell somebody, I think you clogged the toilet. There's water everywhere because it's super embarrassing. Then uh, we have, this is a good one, Captain Sham pretended to destroy their brother's expensive violin, but it was actually a cheap replica. Uh, that is uh, dastardly, uh, very well done, uh, very well done to you, Captain Sham, but that is that is dastardly. That just the, I, I know, did you record it? Did you record the look of terror on your brother's face? You, you probably did. Yard Mule has a classic short sheet and unmade bed. Uh, we did that when my cousin got married. I went upstairs with a bunch of people in the wedding party, and we all short-sheeted the bed. We put all their towels in the tub and filled it with water. Uh, this is on their wedding. They're going up there to spend their, their wedding night. So uh, just to let you know what kind of family I come from. I, I get it, honestly. Forbidden Angel, spontaneous hide-and-seek, and Ghost Back 4 made an automatic pie thrower and got their stepbrother in the face as he opened his trunk. That is incredibly creative, and it is April Fool's Day, and while we're not pranking you, there may be a trick to this Monday edition of Daily Trivia Live, the mobile game show where you win money from the comfort of your phone. We are not kidding around when we say that you will need all of your smarts as you play for today's grand prize. There it is. That is $1,000, when you correctly answer 10 multiple-choice general trivia questions, you will win your share of it. In this game, you will earn one bonus SB for every question you get right after question number one, even if you've already been eliminated. Here's the deal. You win the game, they are automatically added to your share of that grand prize. Otherwise, you do have to claim your bonus SB at the end of the game in order to keep them, so don't go anywhere. Lucky for you, it's as simple as clicking a button that appears on your screen. That's what I'm saying. Even if you get frustrated you're not winning the grand prize, you can still walk away with something unless you leave early. Then you get nothing, and I don't want that for you. The first time you get a question wrong, as long as it's before question number 10, you can rejoin to give yourself another shot at the grand prize. Two ways of doing that. One is using SB. The other is with a free rejoin. If you don't have any of those, if you didn't get any during Second Chance Week last week, and thank you to everybody who showed up for that, you can click the plus sign in the top left-hand corner of the main menu anytime a game's not happening and get free rejoins by watching videos. Each game, we give away five 100 SB prizes to five players who win and claim at least one SB in the game. And these are the winners from Thursday. They have all been credited already. Behold, congratulations to the five of you. Enjoy your SB. And everyone else, I know you want to see your name on this screen. So keep playing and claiming because next time the winner could be you. All right, the comments, they're off to plant a whoopee cushion. On someone's chair. Hopefully not mine. I'm already sitting down. So let's get this game started right now. Here is question number one. Barack Obama's 2008 presidential campaign used what chant to fire up crowds? Yes, we can, have, or won't. Having a good chant is essential to building the energy of a crowd, and Obama turned it into a movement. He would say, can we do it? And the crowd would respond, yes, we can. Yes, we can is the answer. That's what they would chant. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And we are off and running 98% of you getting that one right. Well done. Already over 16,500 people in grand prize contention. Over 17,300 people playing the game. And with the rejoins from some of our latecomers, we are over 17,000 people in grand prize contention. 
And let's see if you can clue in. There's a pattern to this game. That's all I'm going to say. I want you to do well. So now you're thinking pattern. We're going to move on to question number two. Here's a new pattern for you. Every question you get right from here on out gets you one bonus SB. Here is question number two. What French city is home to a well-known international film festival? Is it Telluride, Cannes, or Park City? In France, I've been there, but not during the film festivals. Very nice. Since 1946, it's provided a glamorous intersection of art and fashion, and the setting doesn't hurt either as you're basking in the sunny Mediterranean beaches of Cannes. Cannes, Cannes, France. I'm giving it a more American pronunciation. It is Cannes, of course. The Cannes Film Festival, the Palme d'Or, which is the main award they give out. It's where a lot of films are sold internationally. A big deal. 92% of you know in that one. Well done. Tell you right in Park City, both here in the U.S. and also home to film festivals. Park City is home to the Sundance Film Festival. Robert Redford started that one. Let's move on to question number three now. It's worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here's Q3. When Popeye consumes spinach, from what container does he usually get it? Is it a box, a bag, or a tin can? Well... Just imagine I'm getting you sort of in the mood for Popeye. Just when you think the sailor man is on the ropes and down for the count, he powers up by squeezing a tin can of spinach open and eating it, sometimes through his pipe. He'll use the pipe to open it. Anyway, a tin can is the answer. 99% of you getting that one right. Are you starting to clue in? Are you sort of catching? There is a pattern to this game. I'm going to keep repeating it for you, but... I think you might have it by now because we're on to question number four already, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Someone with a positive approach to solutions is said to have a what-do attitude. Is it a will-do attitude, a can-do attitude, or a should-do attitude? If you're positive, you have a what-do attitude. Your attitude determines your altitude. That means approaching things with a positive can-do attitude will often result in you achieving more than you thought was possible. Can do! Can, of course! 88% of you getting that one right. Well done. 12% going with will. Uh, will do is nice. I feel like will do is more like I'm going to get around to it. Can do is I can do it. I can. I Positive. We can do it. That is, uh, that is the answer that we were looking for. But of the 12% of you that got eliminated, most of you just rejoined. We still have over 16,000 people in grand prize contention. That's what I like to see as we move on to question number five. Worth one bonus SP if you get it right. Oscar the Grouch lives in what kind of home? Is it a garbage can, a condominium, or a yurt? Where does Oscar live? Yeah, where do I live? It's not a great impression, but you get it. I have a theory that his home is a front for an elaborate system of underground tunnels that allows Oscar to travel from his garbage can home to anywhere in Sesame Street or the world, for that matter. He lives in a garbage can. That's right. Well done. Sort of like Popeye the Sailor Man in the song from kids, you know, with your kids. I'm Popeye the Sailor Man. I live in a garbage can. Anyway. 99% of you getting that one right. We can just move right on to question number six now, worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. If you're planning to do something that's much more complicated than you realize, you're opening a blank of worms. Is it a tube of worms, a can of worms, or a Tupperware of worms? Gee, if only – I feel like you're starting to figure out the pattern now. <laughs> Fishing technology has evolved over time, but in the 50s, your live bait came in a tin. So if you opened it up, all of a sudden, you are dealing with a wriggling can of worms. Can is the answer. 99% of you getting that one right. 1% going with a tube. A uh, tube of worms would also be kind of difficult. And maybe the hard part of that would be getting the worms into the tube because it's smaller. Can, you could just sort of scoop them up and then... Throw a lid on. Anyway, we are going to move on now to question number seven with one bonus SB if you get it right. Here it is. Former MLB pitcher Dennis Boyd went by what nickname? Is it Fireball, Slow Throw, or Oil Can? See if you've, your pattern recognition is really going to help you with this one. Yep, there we go. All right, all right. Back when Dennis was a teenager, he and his friends would sneak off and drink beer, which they called oil. Dennis drank so much of it that they named him Oil Can. Oil Can Boyd is who I'm talking about. That was the toughest question that I had, but 76% of you got it right because you figured out there's a pattern to this, people. The people who answered Fireball, you're missing the pattern. That's okay. I believe you can get it on the next one, and you have an opportunity to rejoin because you've been doing so well throughout this entire game. Oil Cam Boyd uh, famously pitched for the Red Sox in the 1986 World Series, always had an attitude, um, had a lot of addiction problems that he later overcame, which is good for him. But 
uh, classic personality, classic baseball personality was he. All right. We're down to 14,500 people in grand prize contention. We are moving on to question number eight now, worth one bonus SB, if you get it right. Here's Q8. What music hall dance, born in the 1840s, is still used in French cabaret performances today? Is it the can-can, the kick line, or the do si -do? If you figure, again, the pattern, the pattern's helping here. I see it. Jacques Offenbach's song of the same name is instantly recognizable, and you can almost picture the showgirls lined up to dance the can-can in cartoons. That's right. 94% of you getting that one right. You can, can move on to question number nine. Well done to you. I can't believe we are already at our second to last question. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Here is question number nine. What song by The Who was the theme song for CSI Cyber? Is it My Generation, Happy Jack, or I Can See for Miles? Pattern recognition, just going to keep saying it. Yeah, there you go. Well done. Now, CSI has used a lot of music from The Who in their themes. CSI used Who Are You, CSI Miami used Won't Be Fooled Again, and CSI Cyber used I Can See for Miles and Miles. 11,795 of you have made it this far, and you are ready for our final question. But, of course, before we get to that final question, a few things I want to tell you about. First, a quick reminder that there are two ways to get SB from Swagbucks Daily Trivia outside of our live games. There is the Daily Trivia Challenge, that is the quick, hostless version of our game that you can play on your schedule up to twice per day. But the real treasure in this app, the hidden treasure in Swagbucks Daily Trivia is the more ways to earn button. And you can find that in a number of places in the app. Click it when you see it, because that will take you not only some great ways you can earn by downloading and playing other games, but the tap joy wall. If you're not doing your daily tap joy, I say it every time, I'm not going to stop now. If you're not doing your daily tap joy, you are missing out on some of the best that we have to offer. They're simple offers. They're easy offers. You can earn some SB that's going to rack up over time. You're checking off daily discover from your to-do list, and you're building habits that are going to get you more SB, which means more gift cards, which means more spending power. That's just a good thing for you all around. So do that. Another way to earn is by sharing the joy of swag bucks with friends and family. That is by referring your family and friends. Here's the deal. You refer somebody to swag bucks and they earn 300 SB in their first 30 days, you get a $3 bonus. And that's on top of getting a 10% match of their earnings for life. So not only are you giving your friends and family a way for them to earn free gift cards and make their lives better? But it's benefiting you because when they get a bunch of, of, of benefits from Swagbucks, a bunch of gift cards, a bunch of SB, that's going to benefit you too. So refer everybody you know. Make them as happy as you are on the site, which is very happy. I know. All right, we have 12,761 people who are very happy that they are still in the running for a piece of our $1,000 grand prize. Almost 18,000 of you have stuck around to the end, and there is one more question left to go. It is worth one bonus SB if you get it right. Remember the pattern. Here is question number 10. What comedian starred in movies like Uncle Buck, Cool Runnings, and Rookie of the Year? Is it Dan Aykroyd, John Candy, or John Belushi? Who am I talking about? There you go. Good job. He left us way too soon, but thankfully we can still look back on his work and enjoy the humor, warmth, and pathos of John Candy anytime we want. John Candy is the answer. 12,431 of you knew that answer, and you are splitting our grand prize today. Well done to you. You picked it up. All the answers were some variation of the word can. And now a bunch of you can be congratulated by me. Each of our grand prize winners taking home nine SB in grand prize money, plus the bonuses you earned along the way. Ali, all money in. You are a winner. You are in the winner's circle. CHS GG, congratulations. Kelly, Keller Hershey? I don't know if I got that one right. Sizemore Chase 3, I know I got that one. Until the sky ends 3, congratulations to you. And Sasha Velelli 9, just a few of our grand prize winners. Congratulations to all of you. And congratulations to those of you who earned bonus SB along the way and claimed them at the end. You have more in your account now than you did when the game started. That makes you a winner in my book. And now that you have all these new SB in your account, you know what to do with them. Redeem them for PayPal cash or gift cards to Amazon, Starbucks, Target, and hundreds of other places. 
You did a great job today. See, I'm not going to prank you in a game. I want to make it easier for you. We got a little bit more challenge for you tomorrow, so come back tomorrow and play that one. Thank you for playing Daily Trivia Live today, and I will see you on Tuesday, my friends. Bye-bye.